Number seven is a sacred number in the Hebrew Bible, beginning with the book of Genesis. The main narrative of the creation of heaven and earth revolves around seven and the week of creation. And planet earth, which was created in one day with heaven, is deeply connected to seven since God described it as the earth which I swore. The Hebrew word for swore, nishbati, derives from sheva, seven. In other words, the earth which God swore is the earth which God acted upon using the principles of seven, like a division into seven parts or seven days. In biblical Hebrew, there is no such thing as day, since day is only a name given to light. Let there be light, and Elohim named the light day. So the act of creation is an act with seven aspects of light. In this video, we will try to find out if the creation story based on the division of the whole into seven is an abstract myth or has empirical proof or factual basis. Since the idea of creating a world in seven days may sound absurd at first, and rightly so, but as we shall see, the paradigm of seven seems to have a scientific anchor in reality. According to the book of Genesis, creation is a drama that takes place first and foremost on the stage of heaven, astrophysical theater that puts on colossal plays for all to see, grandiose performances of solar eclipse and lunar eclipse designed to show and remind the perfect accuracy of creation. And with the help of three key actors, the sun, moon and earth, prove time and time again that this is a pre-calculated and planned space engineering. Creation is deeply invested in show business, because the truth in heaven has a unique quality it loves to be seen. Solar or lunar eclipse, silently ringing in the sky like church bells, announcing the start of an epic showcase designed to draw our attention to the mega structure that is moving in space so that we'll recognize the fact that creation is the result of intelligent engineering design, a calculated work down to the last meter. Since we know the true size of the planets today, it is possible to test the paradigm of creation based on seven and compare it to the true dimensions of Earth and the planets in the context of number seven and of the word swore, shevua, derivative of seven. God's chosen word to describe planet Earth. So, the Earth that God swore, usually and mistakenly translated as the Promised Land, is actually the Earth which God, Nishba, divided to seven parts, acted with the principle of seven. And the sky can only be explored from Earth. This is the starting point. Solar and lunar eclipses were planned for and observed as such only from Earth. An earth which was created with heaven in one day preserves the decimal system, which is the mathematical base of Hebrew, the language of God, of gematria, arithmetic, and Hebrew geometry. The circumference of planet Earth, 40,000 kilometers, is the circumference of a decimal square, 10,000 kilometers by 10,000 kilometers. And a decimal square, as we know, is the base of the Holy of Holies in Shilomo's temple, the Dvir. So in order to calculate the diameter of planet Earth, we'll divide the circumference of the decimal square 40,000 kilometers to pi, 3.14, and the result 12,727 kilometers indeed is the diameter of planet Earth in reality as well. As we see, the decimal count is the mathematics of nature, as well as of the Hebrew language, Hebrew theology, geometry and gematria. And this decimal count is preserved in the basic physical principles of Earth simply in its circumference, a reminder and preserver of the decimal system and of the Holy of Holies of the temple in heaven, in the sky. So let's draw planet Earth in its real size and divide it into seven parts. This is the Earth which I swore, and it contains all. Genesis chapter 1 tells us that the state of the earth was in chaos, tohu vavo, and by that it implies that both wonder and solution are hidden inside earth itself. 
for the earth was in chaos and not the sky. It therefore makes sense to assume that what was created later came from the thought of earth. Let's examine if this is the case in reality using seven base geometry and planet earth in its real size. We'll mark a typical triangle, one out of seven, and define an inner circle tangent to the sides of the triangle. The diameter 3467 kilometer indeed is the diameter of the moon in reality as well. So before we continue with more planets, let's talk about the moon, a major factor in creation and in the biblical account. In Hebrew, the moon is called Yareach, the root word of Yericho, Jericho, the main entrance and the gate to earth which God swore. Yareach 218 in Gematria also mean Hagadur, which implies to Kadur, a ball or a sphere. Hagadur also means the fenced one or the enclosed one. Indeed, seven full moons are enclosed within seven triangles inside Earth heptagon. Seven moons is the number of days in a week. This is compatible with the role of the moon as the celestial biolo biological clock, and the only heavenly body responsible for number seven, the count of seven days, weeks, months, holidays, and years. The first command given to the people of Israel as they left Egypt is in regards to the moon. The first day of spring equinox is the head of the 12 months, Rosh Chodesh Hulachem. And the full moon of Passover marks the 14th day of the first month. And the ceremony starts exactly at midnight with the full moon above the head to commemorate the escape from Egypt, which happened the same way with the full moon. The moon Yareach 218 is also the word Bria, creation, literally means creation. The Kabbalistic world of creation is also the lunar world. Creation Bria means Bereiya, with sight with the help of the eyes, using the ability to look, to observe, to see, lirot. Therefore, perhaps this is the time to mention the ancient phrase, and their eyes were opened, describing the opening of the third eye and the transformation of Adam and Eve, since here too it is a necessary precondition for anyone interested in understanding the creation program and the text in Hebrew. Since the creator Elohim, is a cosmic intelligence that transmits knowledge through language, and the role of language is like the role of the moon to shed light in the dark. The moon is called luminary, ma'or, in Gematria 247 means remez, a hint or a sign. Indeed, the moon is a sign, an enigma, and an announcer of days, weeks, months, and holy times but mainly the moon serves as a key to the world of creation. The moon is the entrance door into the earth which I swore, and it is the same biblical entry into the ancient land of Israel through Jericho, through Yericho, that is, through the moon. Yericho derives from Yareach, moon, and so the entrance to the earth which I swore is through the moon. And Yericho, Jericho was circled seven times as the number of moons inscribed inside Earth heptagon. The Earth, which I swore, is the incubator of the moon. And accordingly, as we shall see later, the seven moons fence a 1,000 kilometer diameter sphere, and by that, they maintain the master plan of Hebrew decimal geometry, as shown in my video about the pyramids in Giza and the hept heptagon of the spirit of Yehovah. The moon is also called Sahar, in Gematria 265 is the word Michre, mine, a mine. Apparently this is exactly the sort of activity we see on the moon, perhaps so uh, for millennia. Countless mines, not necessarily craters, and a vast network of tunnels, ditches, roads, bridges and structures of all kind, all show traces of terraforming of the moon. The moon also shines, 
It doesn't seem to reflect sunlight, but rather it shines from within. It might be triggered by sunlight, but the moon's soil has a unique luminary quality, and this can easily be seen with naked eyes from Earth. The white powder found in craters stretch far out to all directions, forming a gigantic network of shining threads. Does this suggest the presence of electromagnetic force? Perhaps, since a similar visual effect is achieved with a simple magnet and iron powder. Now, the moon shines, Zohel in Hebrew, mean, meaning the shining one. Zohar in Gematria 218 is exactly the Gematria of Yareach. And so, the book known as the Zohar is also about the moon, about the shining one. And indeed, the small luminary Yareach represents the world of creation, associated with sight, Bere'iya the ability to truly see with open eyes. Only then one can understand that the moon indeed is a mine, Michre, Sahar. And the moon is the shining one, the Zohar. And finally, the moon is Jericho, the biblical entrance to the earth that God swore. Jericho, Yareach, is in the temple in heaven. So, the world of creation points to the moon, while the world of formation points to a circular geometry, which, uh, since formation, Yetzira in Hebrew, 315, is the word Kotel, meaning diameter. So the book of formation points at sacred geometry, and the Zohar points to the moon and to the world of creation. These are the two keys needed to understand the linguistic structure and the physical structure of the earth which God swore. So let's return to earth heptagonal and the moon and see how the natural philosophy of creation based on seven unfold. We'll connect seven points of intersection between the seven moons and strengthen them with one circle now we discover Mars in its true size, diameter 6,900 km. When we mark the external boundaries of the heptagon and measure the height from the apex to the base, we discover the diameter of Venus, 12,098 km. Let's dive deeper and connect the seven vertices of the inner heptagon formed naturally in the geometric matrix. Again with a circle, this time we discover Mercury in its true diameter, 4,542 kilometers. Finally, within the circle of Mercury, rotates Pluto in its true diameter, 2,271 kilometers. We consider nature as the absolute. And the facts in nature show us that the Earth, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and even Pluto, in their true physical size, in reality, were designed according to the heptagonal matrix of planet Earth. The Earth, which God swore, is the standard model of the solar system, at least the inner half. Planet Earth is the reference point of creation or is the point of reference. And the planets, revealed in the heptagonal plan, serve as the empirical and factual proof that the main paradigm of creation, based on seven, is practically true. This plan shows that, as above, so below. Everything above, in the sky, is also found down in Earth. But the match between the dimension of the planets in the geometry of seven and in reality makes it difficult to distinguish between the simulation and the real world. And this is an illustration and an explanation to another biblical quote, Meloha Aretz Kvodo, the whole earth is filled with his honor. The planets fit in perfectly and unanimously confirm the paradigm of creation with seven as told in Genesis. 
And this was the purpose of the geometric inquiry.